All right. Assignment six. So far, we've done 10 tutorial videos that have taken us through the process. Everything from text block, sketching, to typesetting, choosing uh, typefaces, modifying them, uh, vectorizing the type, and then coloring, coloring it, and then adding a background behind our poster, and then adding a border to our background. Right? So all of that's been done, but it flies by. So where we post it, there's only three things you're actually required to post for full credit here, but I always love seeing more process work. And those three things are right here in the assignment. In the past student example, I always do that as part of the assignment directions. So you want to turn in your, your clean black type, just as black shapes on white. It can be turned in as a JPEG or even as a screen grab, as long as it's high enough resolution to look good on Canvas. Joseph, you want your color type as well. So you want it separated as your black type, your color type, and then your finished poster. So you need all three of those elements. They're right here. To get full credit on this assignment, it's due by midnight tonight. If you want to add your text blocking sketches, I think that's great. It helps understand the process. But to go through what I did, I did these quick thumbnail text blocking sketches. And design is all about problem solving, right? And so this idea of having suffer no fools and having a top and bottom text design, it was the trick of where do you put the no for me? And so this helped me figure that out. I could float it on top of my image, but that didn't seem the best. And so kind of integrating it into the top seemed the best. This was my typesetting that was done by stealing a typeface from Defont or using a typeface from Defont because they are offered up for creative use. Um, warping it, you know, doing it all as a, a low resolution raster and then taking it up to full resolution, either as a vector or just at full raster pixel resolution, which is 16 by 20 inches at 350 pixels per inch. And if your poster is at this resolution, where you still have smart objects and nothing got rasterized and upscaled, they're going to look really good on that, that big paper, the biggest paper we can print in the lab. So that's my clean black type. That's my first requirement. This is what we did last class, the using layer styles, things like gradients, things like strokes. Um, you can do inner glows, outer glows, inner shadows, drop shadows. You can do uh, texture and emboss or bevel and emboss. You can do satin, all these things. That's what my color type is, just like a color logo. And then you put it onto a background and you get a poster. And the poster should have a white border. Now, because I'm always feeling rushed doing the demos in the class, I tend to reflect on the work and make alterations to it before I would make it print ready. So what this is going to show you are my final decisions for my poster. Though this meets all the requirements, I enjoy digital art. So in Photo P, I'm going to open up my latest PSD that I worked on outside of class. And I will show you. It's a pretty large file. These, these are large, at least 100 megabytes, because a flattened 16 by 20 by 350 pixels per inch file is around 100 megabytes if it has any pixel content at all. Not as a JPEG, but as a, a TIFF or a PSD file. But I just wanted to simplify the background. So I simplified it a lot. <laughs> Instead of having all those waves and waves. And to just get a hint of those waves on top, I built them in onto this layer. that just kind of looks cleaner and is less distracting. So it's always good to look at your designs um, in the morning, the next day, and see what's working for you. We have three elements here that we're trying to design and make engaging. We have our spot illustration, we have our type, and then we have our background. And you want them all to work in harmony and not distract from each other. 
So to me, in waking up to this, it worked, but I got distracted by, remember this was an AI generated background that I modified. I got distracted by these, just the little areas the AI screwed up and it's not as even. So instead I used my own design and just cleaned it up like this. All right, additional things we can do with our poster. I want you to understand printing and how printing works. So we've talked about full spectrum coloring and we've talked about dissolve as a layer style. And that helps break up the very digital, especially soft edge duotone coloring that I used. And it helps it print really well to boot, right? Because it's engaging more print heads for all aspects. Even when it's printing orange, there's a little bit of purple printing. And it's all kind of mixing together to get a, a less flat looking print. So that's what's called a random diffusion separation of color. We're going to learn about that. Another way that we could play with it is what's called mechanical diffusion or more commonly a half drop pattern. So to understand that, let's go to the assignment page in the class. This is something I want you to understand. And you can use it in limited ways within Photopea. You can use it in much fuller ways in Photoshop. And I'm happy to show you that if you are interested. But I just need you to know about it. So if you go under assignments to assignment six, you'll see a mentorship presentation on type design, an exhaustive explanation of CMYK color separation, uh, a link to digital key art design, which is what has kind of replaced movie posters in art now and its place in the culture, right? Which is exactly the kind of thing we're doing, this problem solving of using photography or spot illustration, integrating it with type and putting it onto a background so it stands out and gets you to click on that in your, in your uh, streaming menu instead of something else. Just like movie posters used to get us into the theaters. But the one I want to pay attention to now, which seems like it doesn't really fit, is the exhaustive explanation of CMYK color separation. Because as we get into printing, this is how printers see your pixels. And we've seen this word before, CMYK. That is the mode that digital files come, come in when you export them from Illustrator. What CMYK stands for is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. They don't use B for black because they would, B can be confused for blue, which is what the cyan is, so they use K, CMYK. If you have a color inkjet printer at home, the four inks you have to buy for it are cyan, yellow, magenta, and black, right? Because on white paper, the mix of those four inks, those three colors in black on white paper give you the illusion of thousands of colors. So you layer up the yellow ink with the cyan ink and you get green. You layer up the magenta with the yellow and you get orange. Vice versa, and all those variations. What's really cool digitally about this is we can use the computer to separate out our pixels into these distinct colors. And then you can layer them in different ways. So why isn't it just called CMYK color? It's called CMYK separation because in order for these inks to make the color, they have to be offset from each other. If all the dots printed directly on top of each other, you just get a muddy brown for every color, right? No matter how much magenta, how much cyan. So the way they mix it is by using bigger and smaller dots with differing spaces between them. And this is a mechanical diffusion process. That's very, very common to older printing techniques and still some modern ones. This is how your textbooks are still printed. It's just the dots are so fine, they're at least 300 per inch that you can't see them, right? But with a magnifying glass, you can see them. In newspapers, you can see them. That's 150 dots per inch. And if you ever use a magnifying glass, you can see them. So halftone color separation really simplifies your color, but it ironically makes it print better because you're 
you're controlling as a digital artist the way that the, the printer is going to interpret your color. Whether it's in monotone, just values of one color. So these are two different halftone screens on white that are giving you all those light yellows and dark yellows just layered on top of each other. Whether it's a three color uh, halftone job on like a grayish paper or whether it's a full color separation on white paper. This is an artist that uses digital art and vectors, separates out the colors on the digital art, prints it on a really low quality material like cardboard, but prints it by actually doing film work that's digitally outputted and then silk screened onto cardboard. So that requires taking silk screens coating it with photo emulsion, just like you would for t-shirts or old style, style posters, using the film work, exposing the photo emulsion to the film work, spraying it out with a high powered hose to basically get a really high quality stencil. And that's just for one of the colors. So you have to do that for every separated color. So this is his process. And then he does that across multiple frames. And then he animates the frames digitally. So what we're seeing is an analog animation created from digital files that are hand printed. So for this animation, these were the, the different silk screens he had to pull. Uh, it's actually a three color one, the cyan, the magenta, the yellow, and then there's also the black, but he didn't include that here. So this is what the cyan and the magenta layered up as a silk screen look like because when the cyan and the magenta overlap, you get this darker purple. This is what the magenta and the yellow look like when they're overlapped. And this is very close to what they look like when they're all overlapped together with the addition of a black ink one because cyan, magenta, and yellow together create what's called 100% black, but it's really kind of like an 80% brownish gray. So that's why you need black as an extra color. And if you want more from him, you can see the behance of his process, which is really, really, really interesting and uses digital and analog in all steps of the process. Because he loves screen printing and loves making digital art to output screens. So how do you take your digital image and separate it out into these different ink channels? Well, we're going to learn that. All right. So he does it with what's called full bleed color. He has the screen completely filled with the ink. And so you don't have a lot of variations of color. They're just solid blocks of very simple color. If you want variations of color with the same process, you have to separate your colors and all the gradients of your color, even just with just a black layer, into these dots. So these are mechanical, what are called bin day dots after Benjamin Day, who is the printer that came up with this in the early 20th century. You can separate color in other ways besides mechanical bin day halftone dots like this. You can do what the computer does in Photoshop when you use dissolve and you can use an indexed dither pattern or sometimes called a sand diffusion pattern, which is made to look more random. This is what a four color color separation looks like. If we zoom in, we see this, that's indexing, doing an index dither, not of the different inks, but of the different pixels. So it's very similar to when you use dissolve as a layer style. But this is how things are professionally printed on four color lithography presses, which were all built in the 50s. And some of them were built in the 60s, some of them were built in the 70s. If a new one is built today, it still matches the specifications from the 50s. So this is still how things are physically printed. No matter how high tech the technology gets, until that whole printing infrastructure changes, this is how movie posters are printed. This is how books are printed. This is how CD covers are printed. This is how a lot of professional things are printed, right? So they take an image and they separate it into these four channels is what they're called digitally. And those channels are then separated into half tone dots because ink can't be thin ink will always be at its full opacity from the printer. 
So to get the colors to mix, you mix them optically by layering.